Yeah, so this is a short presentation of one case where which I have edited uh, on uh, Wellis. Oh, uh, so this is a scanogram, I think you can see. There was a slight recurvatum in this case and uh, this is the short, you know, uh, example of uh, short views of all the steps. First of all, you have to ensure the docking is correct and adjusted before the draping is done. So routinely, the, all the exposure, medial parapatellar incision is taken and then the spins are fixed. Uh, you have to adjust the, you know, uh, camera in such a way that you get the correct mark and uh, move the leg through range of move movement so that it is visible. And like navigation, you point this, uh, all the landmarks rapidly. I am not going to take much time on this. Then map the distal femur, posterior femur, the distal medial, distal lateral, then posterior femurs. With this, you have to just move this probe. It's not difficult at all. And uh, about 120 points are taken from each region. And most important, after this, you have to take the anterior cortex about 7 centimeters above the articular surface. Gradually, you have to take it, slide the probe and then confirm these points. The anterior is very important to avoid notching and then confirm all these points that uh, whatever, whatever we have marked. This reconfirmation is of very much importance. Now here you can see this is 12 degrees, 13 degrees extension. That means it was in recurvatum and this is the graph what we, you know, get. So now these two, three screens are very important in planning the case. Execution is not really difficult because the soil is controlled with, the planes are controlled with the robot. So after this is done, then you have two workflows which, which are possible. Either mechanical alignment or you can do a kinematic alignment with tensioner. If you have to do a tensioner, then you have to do the tibia first. So you take this limb through range of movement, apply gentle stress to check the ligaments and then this is the screen what you get. So this is a really fantastic screen, I think. I've used many systems, robotics. So this is one thing which shows you not only the positioning of the implant in all planes, femur and tibia, and not only that, but also the ligament condition on the right hand side where you see the graphs. Now, the first image, So this screen is basically for the femur, valus, varus and valgus. You can see here it is zero right now. This is for rotation. You have this screen here showing the rotation. This is for the anterior uh, to know whether you are notching or not and how much is the flexion in the femoral component. Tibia, varus, valgus and the depth of the cut of the tibia on the medial and lateral side and this is the slope. So on this you see the static images and on the right hand side this is the range of movement through which the joint is opening. So you get to see everything on this screen and then you can take your cuts. Now in this no, case, uh, I decided to Narendra, go can I Can I stop sure. here for a minute? It's a very important. Yeah. Why this screen is so good is because any change that you do in any of the position, it will reflect on the what you've done with the ligament, uh, what will happen to your ligament. One screen you can change the position of the femur and see what will happen. You can change the position and see what will happen so that you can arrive at a position that you want which will give you an ideal ligament, uh, right? That's absolutely. For, so for we'll get two chances. If you are doing tibia first, now if you are doing femur first and mechanical alignment, then that this is going to be your final chance to, you know, align your prosthesis the way you want, whether you want in a neutral mechanical alignment or you want to give a couple of degrees of varus and rotation. But if you are doing the tibia first, then with the tensioner, you can have one more chance to adjust the femoral component, which is a, a sort of restricted kinematic alignment. So here you can see since it was a recurvatum, I decided to deduce the distal cut and uh, so you can see now on the right hand side the number changing here. So you can see that it is becoming, you no. Know, what happens in recurvatum that is also very important. How these numbers are arrived by the robot is also important. Now these numbers are the distance between the sensors of the tibia and the femur. So even if it is in flexion. FFD or in recurvatum, they are going to come relatively near to each other. So this number you will see is less. It is it is not a tight gap. So even you know if you, even if you are uh, using a robot, how to interpret this number is a learning curve. Not the learning curve is not into you know how to use the saw. 
These numbers are going to be, then what it actually is trying to tell you, that is most important thing. So here you can see, it, since it was recurvatum, the sensors come near it, each other and then the numbers reduce. And then the uh, saw takes the position, it is a linear haptic sort of a control, so the plane is maintained. Even if there is a slight movement of the leg while cutting, the saw gets adjusted to it. So you don't like some other systems, you don't need to put thick pins in the bone to maintain it. After the cut is done, we can check with the probe and you can see sub millimeter accuracy and this, this is a tensioner or uh, which you put in the tibia and then again take the limb through range of movement. So you put this. One more thing we have, we have to remember that the saw is 2 millimeters thick. So the cut which is suppose it is planned at 10 millimeters will be measured at 8 millimeters. So you have to keep that in mind otherwise you will go on recutting it. And this is what, what happens when you know tensioner once the tensioner is put this is what these are the numbers what we are getting. So I am going to adjust the components to get my gaps right. So on the on this screen you can see I am giving the femur some varus. So about 3.5 degrees varus is getting my you know, gaps equal and on rotation I can now 13 degrees lateral. So lateral inflection is loose so we can externally rotate the femoral component by a couple of degrees and you can get your tension right uh, gaps right in even flexion also. So you, you have to decide your workflow. It is very you know sort of a friendly system. So here I have adjusted to around uh, 6.5 degrees. You need not worry. I have seen that you no know, even if you give 6 degrees rotation the patellar tracking is fantastic. You don't get instability at all and that is sort of an eye opener when we were doing you know conventional surgery it was always something like um, 3 degrees, 3.5 degrees, but here you can see the gaps are almost equal and then you can, without raising much ligaments, you can execute rest of the cuts. So the, it takes the, uh, for further cuts for femur, it takes the plane and then you go on cutting the uh, required bone. So you keep the TBL tensioner there, so it protects the TBL surface also and then the saw cuts, it, it takes very little bone from the distal femur as there is some sort of uh, flexion, uh, uh, sort of um, uh, recurvatum deformity. After distal cut, it will take, for, um, uh, the plane is taken by the saw for the anterior cut. With the two saw, like uh, Dr. Maniar was saying, whether you were stressed in the initial period, yes, if you, I was a bit uh, sort of worried in the first few cases, whether it will notch or not, but uh, now I've seen that the cuts are really absolutely precise and you don't need to worry about it. So it will take all four planes and then the bone is uh, then removed from uh, the, you know don't require any other jig or anything. It is one intelligent instrument which replaces all the jigs. You take this out and then prepare and then take a trial. <coughs> so on trial you see that the gaps are absolutely equal. Whatever we desired, what we, we got, we corrected the um, uh, recurvatum also and this is the final x-ray. So I think uh, reproducibility, every time you get the uh, desired results, whatever we planned, we can execute it perfectly. Very friendly sort of a uh, system, you don't need CT scan. Some of the systems which are of CT based, uh, uh, almost get a exposure. There was one paper which said that one CT scan for one robotic takes about 283 x-ray chest exposure. So that is also avoided. There are also papers which have been, which have shown that the accuracy with the real-time mapping in the image-less systems and image-based system is equal. So that's I think the advantage of this system. Thank you.